Well, with me this evening, I have King's Counsel, uh, former Solicitor General, India's topmost jurist, Harish Salve, with me. Uh, Mr. Salve, you must have been watching the situation, you know, as far as the Kejriwal case and Likagate case is concerned. Uh, first, uh, how are you seeing this case? I mean, you it's a bit of a setback in the Supreme Court today for Arvind Kejriwal. He's not getting any immediate relief. What are the issues which emerge legally and otherwise? Um, uh, I must start by telling you I have some degree of familiarity with the case. I have appeared for the... Uh, I got bail for the uh, officer of Ricardo Pernod who was arrested by the ED. Uh, but let's stay with facts and public record. I'm not surprised as a lawyer that uh, at the outcome of the case because of uh, what is in public domain in the judgment of uh, the Supreme Court in the Sisodia case. So I'm hardly surprised that uh, the court uh, has issued notice and will hear the ED. And um, I think it's a good message that nobody is above the law. Uh, a person who skips summons eight times, whoever he may be, um, has to be viewed dimly, purely as a matter of, um, of, of a judicial approach to grant of bail. Because uh, the basis of our constitution, however high you may be, the law, law is above you. If each of us were to become judges in our own cause and decide whether we will or will not obey a summon or whether we will or will not obey an order of the court, then we are heading to anarchy. So we start from there and uh, it has gone on predictable lines as far as I'm concerned. There is no, as far as the court is concerned, you can make whatever political allegations you want to make. But as far as the court is concerned, there is no decision in this entire string of cases which has really taken me by surprise. Uh, Mr. Salve, uh, the argument, first of all, has been made very strongly here that approvers mean nothing. Approvers amount to nothing. Even if the approver is someone you have worked with very closely, who is aware of the complexities of the case, they are saying approvers mean nothing. You can put pressure on anyone and make him or her an approver in the eyes of the law. That's a political argument made. That seems to be about 75% of the argument so far that the ARP is presenting of, uh, in, in Mr. Kejriwal's defense. It is true that uh, the court would view the evidence of an approver carefully. But that would firstly be at the stage where he's being made an approver. Secondly, Arunab, unlike uh, cases which are now argued on TV channels and on Twitter, in a court of law, the court would first see on what the approver has said. Let me, I don't know what the approvers have said in this case, but let me give you a, a theoretical example. Suppose the approver said, I met Mr. X at his house on so-and-so date at 9 o'clock, which he earlier denied doing. And now he produces a WhatsApp message in a second phone, which he had not disclosed, which shows that he met the person. Will you discredit that evidence merely because he's an approver? If the approver says, okay, earlier I told you I have no idea. Now I'm telling you, here is a check, here is a bank account, here is a trace of funds which move from account A to account B. You go and see that the funds have indeed moved from account A to account B. You still discredit it just because earlier he had lied and said, I have nothing to do with this. So, you know, these generalizations that don't believe approvers. Yes, why does a person become an approver? Your first attempt is to run from the law. When that doesn't work, you realize the options against you are closed. Nirav Modi's sister has turned approved. Did she turn approved at day one? No. Why did she support him in, uh, in trying to launder his money? She did as a sister. When, when the heat got too much, she said, okay, I turn approved. Because I don't want to go down for somebody else. So there are reasons and reasons why people turn approvers. And this kind of a broadside saying, just because somebody is an approver and made one statement earlier, now he's making another statement, is something which the court, I'm sure, considered and dealt with. The other argument, Mr. Salve, is that Mr. Mr. Kejriwal says he is not directly involved in the framing of the policy. The argument no. being made is simply uh, a little bit like saying, no. yes, there was a policy. The policy led to somebody profiting. The state exchequer did not gain much. Private people profited. Yes, somebody made 338 crores. But it means, it doesn't mean that I'm corrupt. 
because there's no paper to prove that I was the one who was signing off on the decision. It doesn't matter if there are any number of people who come later and say I as chief minister had direct role in it because I'm a chief minister without portfolio. I don't sign off on things and hence there is no question of personal culpability. So uh, Arnab, you, uh, there's one thing which I've noticed I was watching once I was watching in fact your channel. Uh, let's not confuse between two independent offenses. Every time you hear the argument, where is the money trail? There are two independent offenses. One is corruption, the other is money trail. Corruption, prima facie, which the Supreme Court found in Sisodia is, to put it in one sentence, a 70 crore license fee, you charge 70 crore license fee, and you justified increasing the wholesale margin from 5 to 12% saying that they have to pay 70 crore license fee. But in 10 months, those people who paid 70 crore license fee earned 500 crores. So they said, Prima Fasi, you acted in a manner which caused a loss to the state and a gain to a private person. That's corruption. Was this policy done? It, it was a far-reaching policy. Was the decision taken without the involvement of the chief minister? Is this for anybody to know? I, I, it's hard to believe, but uh, we don't know what the truth is. So it, the second is, has the money which was taken as a kickback been found? It may never be found. But does it? It may somebody who's being hauled up purely for moving funds around may get off the hook if the money is not found. But somebody who is guilty of corruption, because don't forget, under the Prevention of Corruption Act, it is not necessary to prove somebody received a bribe. It is enough if you show somebody acted in a dishonest manner. In the Sisodia. Sisodia, Chief Minister, all, in all the, the, all the people case in the, in the Justice Kanna. In the, in the, that's right. Yeah. yeah. In if, the, you in the, if you in, read in that the, carefully. In the Manish Sisodia bail order. Where he says there is no trail of money. The so, para 7 of the Supreme Court judgment which denied bail to Sisodia. No, in, in para 7 uh, of the Supreme Court judgment denying bail to Sisodia. It says, and I quote, a conspiracy was entered. Vis-a-vis -vis the new excise policy to enable supersized profits for wholesale distributors in return for kickbacks and bribes. Now, the conspiracy part is understood. Kejriwal's point is that the bribe has not got into my bank account. Need not. You be. have no specific evidence to prove that the bribe came to me. Maybe he got nothing. That's the point they're repeating, ad nauseum. So, th that's, the, that's the money laundering part. If he then, has pocketed the money, that becomes laundering money. In fact, he, for him, it would not even be laundering. He'd be the prime recipient of the bribe. So let me just explain to you and for your viewers, Arunab, let's get this clear. A is a government servant. B is a, B is a businessman. B corrupts A by giving him 100,000 rupees or a million rupees or a million dollars. B has taken a, a has taken a bribe from B. That's not money laundering. He has received the bribe. That's his offense. You may be able to show that A has, commit, A has done something to benefit B. And the law presumes that if you have acted dishonestly to benefit a private interest, money must have been paid. The reason why the law went beyond physical bribes to acts of dishonesty which benefit private interest is because common course of human conduct, you would do it only for a bribe. The money laundering comes later. So A receives a million dollars from B for doing an illegal act. A then gives it to C. And C, who has had nothing to do with this corrupt transaction, takes A's money and puts it in a property in his own name. C is giddy of laundering because what he's trying to do is he's trying to change the color of that money. So money laundering is different from corruption and corruption with the allegation which lies at the door of Mr. Sisodia, I assume that's the same allegation being taken that the, the chief minister and the deputy chief minister conspired to end, make this policy. If the chief minister says he had no role to play in a policy is of this conspiracy magnitude, a charge? Yeah, is, is conspiracy a charge, Mr. Salve, for the ED or for the CBI to look at? Both. In a case such as this, I'm reading... Yes, let me let me give you uh, where where it comes from. Uh, the allegation is 
Mr. Chief Minister, Mr. Deputy Chief Minister, and one or two ministers conspired with a group of businessmen to come up with a policy very favorably, which will be very favorable to a group of people who will raise monies out of it. That's your allegation of corruption. Who all collaborated in that act, civil servants who were parties to that decision making, are all conspirators of the act of corruption. Then comes the laundering. The money is, as the allegation runs, the money was paid by the wholesalers who made the bribe. They paid X, X paid Y, Y paid Z. Somebody had given an advance for some election that got set off. That's the trail of money. Everybody who has touched that money and allowed it to move becomes guilty of an offense for money laundering. He may have no knowledge of where the money came from, just knowing that it, it has come from some naughty business in Delhi. But he helps in passing the money around. That's money laundering. So let's, let's keep the two separately. Yes, ED is investigating the money laundering aspect, but that these are not, as far as the primary people are concerned, these are not in separate compartments. That's why Supreme Court refused by bail to Sisodia. So, you know, the courts seem to be pretty convinced of the evidence that they have. Uh, what do you think of what the High Court said when it said uh, that there is prima facie, the evidence is incriminating qua the petitioner? See, I'll tell you, the law, that was under the Code of Criminal Procedure, then come to the conclusion. Yeah, under our Code of Criminal Procedure, the police cannot grant you pardon. A pardon is granted by executive clemency. Approvership is where the police takes a witness to a magistrate. The police officer steps out. He confesses to the magistrate. He tells the magistrate, the magistrate has to be satisfied, prima facie, that this is a genuine confession. He is being contrite. He is coming out with the truth and taking him, rather than prosecuting him, taking him as a witness for the prosecution is... Will this going to help prosecuting a larger uh, group? For example, I mean, in theory, if Sisodia turned approver against Kejriwal, maybe the court may not allow it because he will say, both of you, public interest demands both of you be prosecuted. But if a smaller fry in, in, in the whole process says, okay, I'll come out to the truth and tell you the truth, the court is the final arbiter of should the person be given pardon, treated as an approval, approver, so that he comes on as a witness to prosecute the main people in the conspiracy. Now, these are judicial decisions. These are judicial decisions. These are not taken in the ED head office. ED may agree to treat somebody as an approver, but it is the court who has to approve. That's why I think that some Delhi High Court took uh, some umbrage of the vocabulary used against uh, the approver's statements. But, but then, you know, if the court also, if the Supreme Court tomorrow does not deny does not uh, does not give bail to Arvind Kejriwal in this case. Look at the situation that we have here, Mr. Salve. The court does not give uh, does not give bail to Kejriwal. Suppose the Supreme Court also takes the view that yes, there is a fair amount of evidence, and we cannot at this stage disregard the evidence. And if the evidence, as the High Court says, is incriminating vis-à-vis uh, -vis Arvind Kejriwal, then the Supreme Court is unlikely to take a, take a different view. In that case, what's the lookout? I mean, Delhi is not going to have a chief minister. We're going to run the government from Tihar jail. This is what the people of yes. Delhi are looking at. And what kind of precedent is that setting for the rest of the country? Well, uh, I have only two comments to make, one serious and one humorous. If you remember back in the day, we used to have uh, the Yes Minister and the Yes Prime Minister series, which showed the battle between the civil servants and the politicians. And, and the civil servants, those were British civil servants, always maintained that the government would run much better if the minister stayed at home. So, <laughs> will Delhi run without a chief minister? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, is, is the chief minister superfluous in Delhi? I don't know. Uh, secondly, I have heard this argument that there is no constitutional bar. Well, there is something called the silence of the constitution. Did the constitution makers ever contemplate that? A popular leader who is found prima facie guilty of a serious offense would be in would be denied bail and would yet want to govern the state. 
I don't think the founding fathers ever thought of this. That's why they didn't provide a detail. Of course, on conviction, you lose your seat. But what should be the position in the interim is a matter of personal conscience and propriety. I think you do throw it back well there. Mr. Salve, you've given some very solid perspective uh, on this case. And uh, let's see what happens after the 23rd. Matter is going procedurally. But uh, this gives us some fresh perspective on this. Harish Salve, thank you very much as always for throwing light on this with me this evening. Thank you so much.